Hello my friends, uh, thank you for being here. My name is Luisa and this is the Lulu Blue Studio. In this video I wanted to investigate a concept. Someone in the comments in one of my videos in the past asked me how do I pick, how do I choose my color palette for my flower compositions. And so with this video I want to give you a few ideas, I want to share with you a few ideas that uh, I have, that I use. So how do I pick uh, the colors? Let's dive into this video. My first answer to this question is looking at uh, social media. I look at my Instagram account, thanks to this account I'm also able to understand and see what other people are painting. Instagram is not the only tool that I use, another one is Pinterest. Pinterest is a platform where basically you can look for content that people are sharing on their boards and you can take inspiration from these, I call them mood boards. These uh, pins that people are saving are basically pictures or short videos and you can look into the boards, mood boards that these people are saving and you can get ideas or you can post onto the Pinterest your own content and also save your content in particular uh, mood boards. So what I like to do using the Pinterest is basically to scroll and have a look at what people are saving and I like in particular to look at flowers compositions that people are saving, but also just mood boards where people are collecting their pictures or videos. And usually there are some color themes and the color themes that I like the most that I feel like they connect with me. I save them in my Pinterest account and they become a sort of inspiration for my paintings. I find, I have to say, Pinterest very useful, in particular for the flower compositions, but also for other paintings uh, that I do. And for example, if you're interested, um, if you sometimes are lacking some uh, ideas, I suggest you to go on to the Pinterest, either look through the pictures of other people, or even you can search for the Lulu Blue Studio mood board, and you can, for example, have a look at what I've saved, and maybe some of the ideas that I saved can be interesting for you as well. The third way that I use to get inspired and to pick my color palette is actually to take pictures when I travel or also when I am in the city where I live and I walk around in parks. I like to take pictures of what I see if there is something that is grabbing my attention. So with this uh, tip I want to give you the idea of uh, being aware of where you are and what is surrounding you. If you notice in your environment something that is picking your attention, take a picture and then use for example that picture to take an inspiration for your next uh, painting. So this is something that I do quite often and uh, I sometimes find myself just stopping in the middle of the street and taking a picture of something that I particularly like and I might use that color, color scheme to paint some flowers or some additional filling flowers or uh, compositions in general for my watercolor paintings. The other way that I use to get inspired, and this is let's say a little bit more technical, is actually to use the color wheel. I have painted for my reference uh, many months ago a color wheel where basically there is uh, a distribution of the colors in this wheel, starting from the primary colors like blue, like um, red and yellow, and basically the color wheel shows you how mixing these different colors you can obtain secondary and, sec and tertiary colors. I do not go too much into details of the color wheel because um, I can do a whole other video about uh, what the color wheel is and how to mix the colors and how to obtain secondary and tertiary colors. But uh, what I want to give you as an information is that uh, through the distributions of the colors on the wheel, you can get an indication on, on what colors fit nicely together on a painting composition. Doesn't matter if it is a floral composition or a landscape, for example, 
The first thing that I like to share is, for example, to use complementary colors together in flower compositions. Complementary colors are colors that are sitting at the opposite side on the color wheel. And for example, opposite colors, uh, complementary colors are blue and orange, for example. And in this sense, uh, these colors called complementary colors are high contrasting colors and they enhance each other. So for example, my recommendation in this sense would be if you are willing to paint a hero flower, for example, in orange color, you could uh, put some filling flowers around this hero orange flower in blue color in order to have this uh, combination of two colors that enhance each other. Of course, this works for all the colors in the color wheel, so not only for the blue and the orange. For example, the complementary color of yellow is a purple, so putting together yellow and purple can also be a very effective way to have nice floral compositions with colors that help each other. Beside using complementary colors, another way is to use uh, analogous colors, that means colors that are sitting next to each other on the color wheel, for example, blue and purple, or for example, uh, orange and yellow. Basically what I'm trying to say is that using a color wheel you can have a more scientific approach to which colors to use in your floral compositions. You can also find a color wheel at the moment on the internet, you just need to google it and therefore what I want to tell you is you can look at a color wheel on the screen and you can take some uh, inspiration from what you see on the screen on the color wheel. There is also a third way that I use that is to use a triadic colors, that means colors that are separated by three colors in the middle in the color wheel, for example blue, and uh, if I skip three colors the next color is red. So I would use, I would put together the blue and the red, so this is something that I could do always uh, taking inspiration from the color wheel. So connect and combine these colors together, always thinking to have some hero colors, but that the opposite colors that you want to use to let this first and hero color to be enhanced, these other colors to be used with uh, lower values, with the different color values that are not as strong, because otherwise there would be too much of a color situation where all the colors are trying to be the protagonist, let's say, of a floral composition. Sometimes though can be a little bit um, difficult to find an inspiration from a color wheel and therefore sometimes what I do is to use a color palette that are basically a collection of colors that sit nicely together. For example is very nice what Canva, the canva.com software website and software proposes to the people because they collect a bunch of of color palettes together and uh, they suggest you colors and they show you colors that sit nicely together and so sometimes I take inspiration from this Canva color palette beside for example the Pinterest color palette where basically the color palette is already created and I try to reproduce these same colors for my floral compositions. Connected to this uh, tip that I'm giving you, I wanted to add that Canva has a very nice um, section on his website, so if you go to canva.com forward slash learn forward slash 100 color combinations, at this website, and I will link it also below, there are a hundred pictures in which they show you nice color combinations that really look uh, nice with all of these colors sitting together. So these are a hundred pictures and you can take inspirations from and I find this tool quite powerful because looking at a picture I can get an inspiration of for example which main colors uh, I wanted to use and which uh, other, let's say, secondary colors I want to use for my flower compositions. Another way that I use to get my inspiration is looking at uh, what's happening around me, so what are the trends. So 
I take inspiration from trends that I can see from clothes, what people are wearing, which are the main colors, fashion colors. For example, if you have noticed in the past, there was a quite strong influence of the lilac color. And so I might take inspiration of using lilac quite a lot also on my floral compositions. Or for example, nowadays uh, the Barbie movie is out and the pink uh, looks to be everywhere. So you can take inspiration from in even, let's say, the trends of what uh, you see around yourself, what's happening in society, movies that are out. You can use this uh, information to readapt for your floral compositions or your landscapes, for example. My last but not least uh, tip for you on where to find inspiration for floral compositions is actually to follow your instinct and play with watercolor and with your brushes and just lay on the paper colors that in that moment make you feel good. So I really hope that um, these points are going to help you as well in your um, watercolor journey and these combinations, these ideas of colors to use uh, and how to find inspiration in the world we are living, use the technology, but also the nature around us are, I think, very meaningful and powerful tools for your floral composition or your landscapes, uh, watercolor paintings. Let me know in the comments below if there is already any of these um, points that you are using for yourself, that you are taking advantage of. And let me know instead if you, for example, find some of these tips useful and something that maybe you didn't think about before. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to this channel and I hope to see you in the next video next time. Bye.